We are now in our second straight month of falling average selling prices in the Denver metro market. Hey, it's Sean Reddy, Keller Williams Reddy Group, and this is our September edition of our Denver market in a minute. I should say minutes. It's going to take us more than 60 seconds to get through this, yet we are looking at month over month and year over year data for a seven county region uh, surrounding the Denver metro market. So the hope is that you, by watching this, you can help guide your home buying or home selling journey into the appropriate time frame that allows you to take advantage of market conditions, but also move on your time frame. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, if you've watched these before, they're essentially nine different metrics that we track month over month data and year over year data. Uh, we do this at a macro scale, like I said, the entire Denver metro market. Uh, there's also a few markets that we really hone in on a micro scale, but we can run these numbers for anyone at any given time. So if you're curious about your neighborhood, your street, your home's value, uh, anything along those lines, reach out to us or drop a comment. Happy to dig into the numbers for you. So the biggest mover this month, and I'd say this month, yet yeah, talking about August uh, as compared to July, uh, the biggest mover is that the median days on market went up by 16.7%, going from 24 median days to 28 last month. The average days on market also went up month over month uh, by 10.3%. By the way, that's the fourth straight monthly increase in median days on market, third straight for average days on market. Okay, I'm gonna jump right to the average price because that's a pretty big one considering that over time, Real estate values have averaged year-over-year -year appreciation of 4%. If you look back all the way back to the Great Depression and do the math, it's about a 4% gain year-over-year -year on average. Obviously, there's some fluctuations in there. Think the Great Recession. Uh, and really think right now because we're now at two straight months of falling, uh, I said average earlier, average and median uh, selling prices. So the median is... A little bit more indicative of, of the overall market because it's not skewed. Yet the median fell by 1.7% month over month. That's after a 1.4% drop in July. So we look back at June, the median price was 613500 This past month, 595000 Look back at June's average price was 735000 Average price this month, 720, well, we'll call it 727. Uh, good for a seven percent, or sorry, seven percent, point seven percent drop month over month. So longer days on market and falling prices. That doesn't mean values are necessarily falling across the board. It just means that as days on market get longer and longer, that does uh, prompt buyers to begin offering less and less. So note to home sellers out there: don't let your days on market get too much above the average and the median. Okay, um, what else? Closed sales fell by 4.5%, going from 4,055 to 3,872. Kind of saw that coming because new contracts dropped last month for, uh, or about 6.5% uh, from July to August, or sorry, June to July, excuse me, so that translated to 4.5% less sales, closed sales in August. Available homes continued their uptick. Uh, this is leftover inventory that hasn't sold combined with new listings. So that is now seven straight months of rising inventory. As of September 1st, there were 11,442 properties available in the metro region. Again, seven straight months. Now, new listings fell for the third straight month by half a percent, not much, but... It's interesting when you have rising inventory, but falling uh, new listings hitting the market. That just says that more unsold inventory is just kind of piling up. So we talked about price, talked about days on market, we talked about inventory. The last uh, metric that we're looking at is the median sale price to list price ratio, meaning on average or on median, if you will, uh, what kind of spread is there between final asking price and selling price, that number actually, the spread went down, the, the percent went up to 99.18. So the median spread between that last asking price and selling price 
still less than a percent, point what, eight two. Um, so there you have it on a month over month basis. Now let's take a look at year over year because we're now in what we're two and a half years into rising interest rates. Now mortgage rates have been falling for about a couple months. And as of today, the average on mortgage news daily was 6.35. Haven't seen it that low in what, about two years. So has that translated to more sales activity? Not yet. And we're going to take a look. So I'm going to break this down because about half the metrics favor sellers, half of them favor buyers. So if you're buying a home, listen up. These are the, the metrics that favor you from a year over year standpoint. First of all, median days on market are up 75% from last year. Last year in August, 16 days median. This year, as I've already mentioned, 28 median days on market. The average days on market also up about 39%, going from 31 average days last year to 43 this year. So if you're buying a home, you have more time and you have more leverage because of these uh, longer days on market. Also, new listings up year over year by 5%. That's what was listed in August of last year compared to what was listed in August of this year. Available homes, get this, up 53.5% year over year. Last year at the same time, 7,500 homes on the market. This year, 11,500. So if you're a buyer, you have options and you can take your time going through those options and you can leverage a better deal. Closed sales are down 2.5% year over year. Uh, another key leverage piece for the buyers out there. Flip side, if you're selling a home, let's say you don't care about the buy side at all. You're just selling, maybe getting out of town selling and going to rent a place, selling to move into your retirement home. You are selling independent of buying a home. Here are the metrics that uh, you wanna hear. New purchase contracts actually up 0.7% year over year, not a big gross number, went from 4,077 to 4,104. The average price and median price both up year over year as they should be in what's not a, you know, real, a, a slide in real estate prices. However, the number is not as big as that 4% historical average I mentioned earlier. The average price is up 2.9%, the median price up just 1.7%. So there's definitely been a slowdown in appreciation, even some depreciation in some areas, uh, as we talked about in the month over month numbers. Lastly, the median sold price to list price ratio up 0.2% year over year, so not much change there. So what do you do with this data? Well, again, this is a macro scale. Every town, every neighborhood is going to have different looking numbers. Uh, so what, the best thing you can do with this data is just kind of take it in as is, yet reach out if you want something that's a little bit more hyper-focused on the areas that you are hyper-focused on. We hope you enjoy these videos. We make them every month. We also make stat videos for specific markets every single week. So definitely tune in. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the notification bell, and drop us a comment. Let us know how we're doing with the data and if we have been a help or can be some help to you. Again, Sean Reddy, Keller Williams Reddy Group. We'll see you next month.